Hello, welcome to Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, the most successful quiz show in the world, which just could give you the most successful day of your life. Hoping to be successful tonight is Paul Harris from Bingley in West Yorkshire. He returns from last time. Uh, Paul's a business development director for a telecoms company, a job he says he enjoys very much. Paul's wife, Cathy, is also back here again. There she is, up in the audience, scowling at me. She's still nervous about Paul being <laughs> reckless. But so long as he's not too reckless and manages to take a few quid home, uh, he'd like the family to travel to some of the far-flung corners of the globe. He says he'd also like to take his two young boys to Canada to see their favourite band, Rush, play live on their home turf. That would be their favourite band, Rush, would it? <laughs> uh, yes, it would. Oh, come on. <laughs> How old are your kids? Uh, seven and ten. Seven and ten. So they'd be the normal sort of age for Rush fans. Uh, yes. This is you. <laughs> this is Dad living out his own dream. Well, I thought if I, if I get you to mention it, then uh, Cathy might let me do it. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> now, come on, serious business. At the end of the last show, Paul had only got as far as £2,000 when the claxon went, but the good thing is that he still has all three lifelines. He's got a 50-50. He can phone a friend and he can ask this brand shiny new audience. So let's see how much further those lifelines take him. Paul, fingers crossed, lots of luck. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? So, this is the question. Question number four is for £5,000. You have all three lifelines. You've got £2,000 at this moment. Here it comes. Which of these is a line of longitude? Equator. Greenwich Meridian. Arctic Circle. Tropic of Capricorn. I think it's the Greenwich Meridian. What was all that? It's like oh. some sort of priest. <laughs> <laughs> well, lines of longitude come ah, down, don't they? You were doing... Yeah, the, the others go around. So if it's... And you measure time from... Yeah, back OK. Back forwards, don't you? So. so is that your final answer? It is my final answer, yeah. It's the right answer. Welcome back. You've got 5,000 pounds. <laughs> Question number five is for 10,000. Have a look. What name did Charlotte Church give to her first child born in 2007? Crystal, Amber, Ruby, Pearl. I think that's going to be uh, throwing myself at, throw myself at the mercy of the audience for that one. You mean you've no idea? And no idea whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> OK, right, audience. First time Paul's needed a lifeline since he came last time. So, on your keypads, this is the question. What name did Charlotte Church give to her first child born in 2007? A, on your keypads, is Crystal. B is Amber. C is Ruby. D is Pearl. It's for £10,000. A, B, C or D. All vote now. Seven percent say crystal, thirteen say amber, seventy-two say ruby, eight say pearl. And you still are none the wiser. Well, after I had an inkling, it was pearl. <laughs> so uh, yeah. Well, it still might be. <laughs> well, it I, might. I think I'm going to to trust the audience. Going ruby. Yes, I'll, I'll go ruby. Final answer. Final answer. Even though you haven't got the focus and you think the answer was Pearl. It's the right answer, you got £10,000. <laughs> when you first met Cathy... Yep. ..and asked her out on a date, she said, absolutely not. Mm, no. I think you're fine, yes. No. Absolutely. <laughs> And then when you proposed to her, she said, are you completely mad? She did do that. <laughs> and yet somehow, the years have gone by and you're still an item. Indeed. What was the magic that she saw in you? Ah. <laughs> um, that was good fun. 
<laughs> that was about it at the time she uh, agreed to marry me. So. Well, why did she say no and then say yes then? Ah, right. So at the time, I was um, didn't quite have my financial matters in order. How many years now? Fourteen. Okay. She's obviously very pleased with you tonight because your finances at the moment are in good order. You would lose nine thousand pounds here if you give me a wrong answer. Question number six is for twenty thousand pounds. Have a look. Tell me what you want to do. In which English county is the town of Rye? East Sussex, Hampshire, Norfolk, Dorset. I don't think it's in Dorset. Actually, I don't know. I think I'd better find a friend. OK. Now, who would know? I'm hoping... hoping Piers will know. Piers? Mm. Piers who? Piers Morgan? <laughs> um... Piers... <laughs> Piers is your great mate, <laughs> one of your most intelligent friends you've known for 30 years, whose name you can't remember his surname. Piers. That's the one. <laughs> OK. Um... <laughs> Shall I ask you where he lives? You probably don't know that either. Um, yeah, I know where he lives, but he's not there at the moment. It's, uh, it's Piers Hill, and he's, um, he's in Holland at the moment. Ah, yes, of course he is. Silly me. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> OK, well, but, uh, but he, he lives near me at, uh, when he's at home in York. He's in Holland? Yeah. What's he doing now, then? What, what's he doing in Holland? Why is he in Holland? Well, an hour or so ago, he was playing tennis, but um, he should be, hopefully, in a bar, not, but still relatively sober. Right, so we're ringing a Dutch bar for some local peers who's just come in sweaty from tennis. Hello? Peers? Yes? Uh, Chris Tarrant here from Hello. To Be A Millionaire in England. How are you? I'm very well, thank you very much. I'm in Holland at the moment. Yes, we know that. That's why we're dialing this Dutch number. <laughs> but we've got Paul here in England. Uh, he's doing OK, actually. He's stuck. And oh said, I know who'll know this, my friend Piers, who's in a bar somewhere in Holland. I do hope I do. Well, we do hope you do. But, um, he's done OK, he's stuck on this one particular question, there are still four possible answers. Uh, it's worth £20,000 to him. OK. OK, right, so serious business. The next voice yeah. is going to be Paul's. He'll tell her the question, there are still four possible answers, and it's worth twenty grand. OK? Thank you. OK, my pleasure. Right, Paul, 30 seconds, fingers crossed, your time starts now. Piers. In which English county is the town of Rye? R-Y-E? Kent. That's not an option. East Sussex, <laughs> Hampshire, Norfolk or Dorset? East Sussex. Top man. Is that definite? Uh, I'm rel yeah, I'm relatively certain of that. Aren't you from there, there? Uh, yes, yes I am. It's right, I, I think it's probably on the Kent East Sussex board, but it's, I'm relatively certain, that if I'm not terribly sorry. <laughs> Yeah. Good choice. <laughs> Ideal. Just what you want for a photo friend. A nutter. <laughs> From a bar in Holland. Good choice. You want to go with this man? Yeah, he's a good, good bloke. He, Hang he's... on, a good bloke? He said Kent. <laughs> Kent's on the border of East Sussex. Sort of. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll go with uh, East Sussex Finance. I might regret Rye it. is actually... It's the private airfield around the back of Paul McCartney's house. Which is in East Sussex. You've just won twenty thousand pounds. <laughs> so <laughs> somehow Paul Harris has got twenty thousand pounds. He still has one lifeline left. He's still got a fifty-fifty. The next question is worth fifty thousand pounds. We'll take a break. Don't go away. <laughs> Welcome back to the second part of tonight's Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? where it's time for one of you at home to win £1,000 of your very own in our viewers' competition without leaving the house. Uh, this is tonight's question. Referring to quantities of game birds, how many are there in a brace? A, two. B, three. C, four. D, five. 
All you have to do is text GAME, G-A-M-E, and your answer, A, B, C, or D, to 84644. Or you can give us a call on 09012 931000. As always, players must be 16 or over, and you have until the end of the show to lodge your answer. For full terms and conditions, go to www.itv.com slash millionaire. Right. Back to Paul Harris, who's sitting here twitching, doing um, <laughs> rather well, actually. He came back from last time with £2,000. He's now increased it to £20,000. You've gone a bit quieter now, haven't you? Yes. All that early, you know, buzz is beginning to drain as you realise <laughs> this is now serious money. Yeah. But, thanks <clears throat> to your mate in a bar in Holland, you got to 20 grand. Uh, Paul, just be careful. You've got a 50-50. You are one away from £50,000. You would lose 19 of the £20,000 you have at this moment if you went for the next question and gave me a wrong answer. Question number seven of a possible 12 is this. Who was the first British chef to be awarded three Michelin stars. Brian Turner, Gordon Ramsay, Gary Rhodes, Marco Pierre White. I think I know that one, Chris. You're going to tell me? Yeah, it was Marco Pierre White. Sure? Before the others? Yeah. Why are you so sure? Because I read an article by him where he was talking about how Gordon used to work for him. And yeah, he would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But he also said that now, having, I'm sure I read it, having been the first chef to receive three Michelin stars, that um, did he want to be bothering? Doing it again, something along those lines. Sure enough to play. You lose £19,000 if you're wrong, Harris. Yeah. Final answer. Final answer. Once it goes to orange, you know you cannot go back. And you could have used your 50 50. You've just won £50,000! <laughs> there was a moment there when you went to final answer when Cathy up there, I thought she was actually going to faint. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't a well bunny. No, I could feel it. Fantastic. Listen, that's what you've done. That is the minimum amount you will go home with tonight. You have. £50,000. That's fantastic, thank you. Want we'll to take it? I'll let you hang on to it for now. OK, thank you. <laughs> I'll put it there. you got 50 grand. Just very quick though, Mark and Jamie, you are going to see Russian Canada. <laughs> With Daddy. <laughs> With Daddy. And Mummy. Is Mummy going? I hope so. Yeah, good. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> she likes him as well. Mummy doesn't look that fast. <laughs> <laughs> we just stay at home and watch the telly. Very possible. But you have 50 grand. Yeah. Now, you still have a lifeline. You are five away from a million. Mm. You have a 50-50 left. You know you will go home tonight with at least £50,000. Have a look at question number eight. This is for 75 grand. Here it comes. Which city is the setting for the TV sitcom Kath and Kim? Adelaide. Canberra. Melbourne. Perth. Not a clue. Well, sorry, I knew it was in Australia. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which is my great help there, isn't yes, it? Yes, we can, we can <laughs> pin it down to Australia. Um, uh, have you watched it? I've seen bits of it. Kath and Kim, Adelaide. Canberra, Melbourne, Perth. For £75,000, you can get rid of two. I think I will help. Take the 50-50, please. OK, computer, take away two random wrong answers. Leave Paul the right answer and the one remaining wrong answer. <coughs> what are you doing? Wibble, dibble, dibble, wibble. Well, I, I know <laughs> Melbourne's in a sort of a nicer place than Adelaide, or I think it is anyway. So I'm going to go for Melbourne. Final answer. Final answer, Melbourne, yeah. 
You had fifty thousand pounds. You've still got fifty thousand pounds. You've now got another twenty-five thousand pounds to go with it. You just won seventy-five thousand pounds. How on earth did you get to that? I've got no Not idea. Not the foggiest. <laughs> Had a lot of help on the way, didn't I? Well, you played it pretty well. There you are, you got that now. That looks great. It's yeah. very, very nice. They're getting nicer. Right, you've got 75 grand. You've now got no more lifelines, mm. but you are only four away from one million pounds. Remember those days when Cathy turned you down because you were a penniless waster? <laughs> Look at you now. Negatively penniless. She's loving penis. you more with every question you get. <laughs> right, question number nine of 12 is for £150,000. You can lose money on this, you could drop 25000 But it's always an interesting one because you could double your money here. You could win 75 or lose 25 So have a look. Question number nine is for £150,000. Here it comes. In 2004, Anastasia Miskina became the first woman from which country to win a Grand Slam tennis event? Bulgaria, Poland, Georgia, Russia. One of those is worth £150,000. Why are you grinning manically? Well, I'm going to have a guess. <laughs> Actually, no, I'm going to cut and run, thanks. Got a clue? No. Well, I don't think it's Bulgaria, but that's... And I don't think it's po Poland. <laughs> Got one more? <laughs> uh, I think it might be Georgia, but... Because I'm sure somebody Russian has won a, a Grand Slam event. Want to play? No. OK. <laughs> Give a big hand. He goes away. Now, take it this time. He goes away with this check yeah, for £75,000. Thank you. Interestingly, Cathy up there also thinks the right answer was Georgia. You're both wrong. The right answer was Russia. Right. <laughs> and you would have lost £25,000. You still go away with that handsome cheque. Give him a big hand. £75,000. <laughs> well played, matey. Enjoy that. Thanks, mate. Enjoy it. It's been a pleasure to meet you. Take care. <laughs> 75 grand. <laughs> Good man. £75,000 better off. Right. We've now got ten brand-new contestants who all applied to be on the show by phoning our millionaire hotline. I'll give you the number later on. They're all hoping they've got the quickest wits and the fastest fingers. We'll find out, but let's meet them. They are... Mark Dyer from Lancashire. Carhol Magani from Derry. Victor Pickett from Northamptonshire. Rachel Keenan from Oxfordshire. Ashley Handley from South Yorkshire. Wendy Kelly from Norfolk. Martin Riley from Lancashire. John Davis from Gloucestershire. Pauline Allen from South Yorkshire. And Phil Ackerley from Lancashire. Right, serious business then, guys. Fastest finger first. Find out which of our top ten here will be next to try for that elusive million quid. We'll have one question. Four answers, only one the correct order. Let's find out who can punch in that correct order in the shortest possible time. No distraction, please, from the audience at this point. I need them to concentrate. Here comes their first question. Put these capital cities in order from north to south. Brasilia, Helsinki, Lisbon, Wellington. Right, let's have a look. Ten started. They, um, they don't look so confident now as they were just a minute ago. Let's have a look. This is the right order. Don't forget, we're going north to south, so we start up in Helsinki, up in Finland, then down to Portugal, Lisbon, then to Brazil for Brasilia, then down to Wellington, New Zealand. So that's the right order. Now, I'm pretty sure ten didn't get it right. These got it right. And then let's find out who was fastest. Who was fastest? 
Ashley Handley in 2.61 seconds. Ashley, it's you. You're mad. Right. Let me play for a million quid. Of course you are. Right, our next contestant is Ashley, Ashley Handley. Uh, he's a student teacher from Thernsco in South Yorkshire. He's wanted to be a teacher for as long as he can remember. And with his probationary year nearly completed, Ashley will soon have achieved his dream and he'll be teaching secondary school pupils business and economics. Uh, he's single, so he's brought his sister Faye along to hold his hand this evening, whether she wants to hold his hand or not. <laughs> if he does well on the show, he says he'd like to pay off all his student loans and consider more studies to upgrade his BA in economics to a PhD, but not before buying a new car, helping sister Faye out and having one great big hell of a party. Good plan. <laughs> right. Twelve questions, three brand new lifelines, one million pounds. Ashley, lots of luck. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? <laughs> Question number one for 500 pounds is this. A measure of the amount of greenhouse gases used to support human activities is a carbon what? Handprint. Fingerprint. Toe print, footprint. It's footprint, Chris. You have five hundred pounds. <laughs> Actually, last point at which you could go home with nothing. I'm sure it won't happen. You have all three lifelines. Question number two would guarantee you one thousand pounds. Here it comes. The Olympic torch always begins its global journey in which country? Italy, Greece, France, Spain. Yeah, that's Greece, Chris. It's the right answer. You've got a £1,000. No problem at all. But they do get a little bit harder as the money goes up. Ashley now has £1,000. He has all three lifelines intact. We'll take a break. Don't go away. Welcome back to the third part of tonight's Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Don't forget, £1,000 is still there for any one of you at home who knows the answer to tonight's viewer's question. A uh, quick reminder for you. Referring to quantities of game birds, how many are there in a brace? A, 2, B, 3, C, 4 or D, 5? Text GAME, G-A-M-E, and your answer, A, B, C or D, to 84644. Or you can phone us on 091293 and you've still got to the end of the show to get your answer to us. Right, meanwhile, back at Ashley, Ashley Handley. Uh, he's now reached the relative safely of £1,000 and he's got all three lifelines. Are you calm? Reasonably. How long have you been a teacher? Uh, about nearly a year. Big kids, little kids, big ones? Uh, well, I'm in a sixth form college at the moment. Are they very bright? Uh, most of them are. Are they? They're getting brighter while I'm teaching them. If you won, <laughs> and you might, it happens. If you want a million quid, would you carry on teaching? Oh, absolutely. Would you? Yeah. All for the kids, isn't it? I don't know. I'm just, I'm just being, <laughs> being nosy, really, and I'm not sure that I believe you. OK, <laughs> right, let's see what happens. You have £1,000. Uh, you have three lifelines. Question number three is for £2,000. Have a look. See what you want to do. With which kind of music is Willie Nelson chiefly associated? Country. Jazz. Opera. Rap. I would quite like to hear him rap, but I'm fairly sure it's country music, Chris. Final answer? Yes, Chris. It's the right answer. You got £2,000. <laughs> you have £2,000. Question number four is for 5000 You have not yet touched any lifelines. Here it comes. Elsinore, the setting for Shakespeare's Hamlet, is in which country? Denmark, Sweden, Finland, Norway. Something rotten in the state of Denmark, I believe. It's Denmark. Final answer? Final answer. It's the right answer, you got £5,000. <laughs> Who's oldest, you or Faye? Faye. 
by about three years. Do you like her? Yes. Okay. Just, <laughs> just asking. So, if you win lots of money, can they give her anything? I'm sure she's got her eye on something. <laughs> okay, we'll try and help. You have £5,000. You have all three lifelines untouched. Have a look at question number five. This is for £10,000. What kind of creature is a leech? Snail, worm, jellyfish, coral. What's a leech? That's a snail? It's an interesting one, Chris. It looks very much like a snail. It's certainly not coral. Uh, I suspect it's not a jellyfish, and I'd be very surprised if it was a worm. Um, so on the basis that it looks like a snail, I'm going to say snail. Not a worm. It could be, Chris, but I I'm prepared to take that chance. Final answer. Final answer. You had £5,000. Ashley, you've just lost £4,000. Oh, well. Such is life. What do you mean, such is life? <laughs> such is life. <laughs> Sorry, mate, it, it is a kind of worm. Give me a hand, he still goes away with £1,000. I'm really sorry. I'm not flying. I'm really sorry as I am. Well, I can imagine. £1,000. <laughs> so, we still have nine eager hopefuls sharpening their wits and flexing their button-stabbing fingers. Nice and quiet, please, audience. Here comes their next question. Put these TV newsreaders in the order they first read the national news. Angela Rippon, Hugh Edwards, Reginald Bose and Kay, Selena Scott. Right, let's have a look. Nine contestants remain. Let's see. This is the right order. And then let's find out who got it right and who was fastest. Bose and Kay, Reggie, right back in the 60s when he started. Uh, Angela Rippon then in the 1970s, Selena Scott in the 1980s, and Hugh Edwards started in the 1990s. So, that's the order. How many got it right out of nine? Let's see. These got it right. Only four. Phil Ackley was fastest in 3.30. Come on, Phil. <laughs> Just when you thought you were going to have a quiet night and go home, wouldn't you? Right, come on. You want to play for a million pounds? Okay. Yes, yes, I'd please. like to do that, please. <laughs> Right, this is Phil Ackerley, who's looking at me kind of glazed. He's moved around a bit, <laughs> including three years in Spain, but he currently lives in Lytham St Anne's in Lancashire. He briefly taught maths and games, but for the past 20 years, he's been an IT software consultant. Uh, he's married to Louise. There she is up there in the audience. They have two sons, 18-year-old Sam and 12-year-old Isaac. Despite suffering from extreme travel sickness, Phil says he'd love to win enough on this show to travel to Australia and New Zealand. He says they'd also like to see the mountain gorillas in Africa. And while he was out there, he might just knock off a charity walk through Namibia, as you do. But his ultimate goal with a really big win would be to say goodbye to the world of IT altogether and open an alpaca farm. Right. <laughs> Twelve questions. Three brand new lifelines. One million pounds is there to be won. Phil, lots of luck. Let's play. Who wants to be a millionaire? <laughs> lots to talk to you about. Let's, um, let's get you up the ladder a bit first. Question number one is for 500 pounds. Here it comes. Which of these women was famously said to bathe in asses' milk? Joan of Arc. Cleopatra. Boudicca. Elizabeth I. It's the right answer. You got five hundred quid. <laughs> Question number two would guarantee you one thousand pounds. It is the last point. You could go home with nothing, but you have all three lifelines. I'm sure you won't even need them. Here it comes. In Charles Dickens' Oliver Twist, Oliver asks for more what? Bread, gruel, potatoes, milk. No, Chris. Sure. Yes. It's 
the right answer. You got one thousand pounds. Gonna be all right. Um, maybe <laughs> for a big strong boy, you nearly fainted. <laughs> you had one thousand pounds. What have you set your heart on? Because you've been talking about leaving IT, travelling the world. I mean, quite a big old shopping list. Moving across to run an alpaca farm. So, what sort of money? Realistically, it'd be, it'd be brilliant if we could get to fifty thousand. Yeah, yeah. Two fifty is the exit stage left with work. I think that's uh, way off. Fifty thousand would be nice. And you could do most of these things, or. Some of this wish list you've got? Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. let's get you some money. You have £1,000. Yes. You have three lifelines. Question number three is for £2,000. Here it comes. With which battle is Field Marshal Montgomery most associated? Rourke's Drift, Agincourt, El Alamein, Gettysburg. El Alamein. Not Agincourt? No. Final answer. Final answer. It's the right answer. You have £2,000. I think he'd, uh, he'd be quite insulted to think he was <laughs> serving at Angie Gore. <laughs> right, you have £2,000. Question number four is for 5000 Here it comes. The word scampi comes from which language? French, German, Finnish. Italian. Not sure, Chris. Okay, take your time. French, German, Finnish, Italian. The word scampi comes from one of those for five thousand pounds. It's not German. And I don't think it's French. Can I ask the audience? You can. Right, audience, first lifeline that Phil's needed. Here's your question. The word scampi comes from which language? Now, A on your keypads is French, B is German, C is Finnish, D is Italian. One of those is worth £5,000. A, B, C or D. All vote now. Ooh, 44%. Uh, it's a majority, but it's not huge. Say Italian, 37% say Finnish, 2% German, 17% French. Now, Phil, what are you going to do? I think we'll do 50 50. Right, computer, take away two random wrong answers. Leave Phil the right answer and the one remaining wrong answer. Sometimes it's kind, sometimes it's not. It does mean they're right about French and German. Uh, you've only got a phone a friend left. The word scampi comes from which language? Finnish or Italian? 37% Finnish, 44% say Italian. You got £2,000, it's worth 5000 I'll phone a friend then. Okay, now, who would know? Have you mates who would know yeah. this? You won't be expecting this sort of question, but I'll phone John. Who's he? He's a, I've known him since he's he was 11. Um, he's a bright lad. He's a history teacher from Sheffield. <laughs> Sounds but like he's on holiday in Norfolk. <laughs> oh, good, of course he is. <laughs> okay, um, we'll phone him. Uh, I just hope he knows it. Hello? John? Yeah, speaking. Chris Tarrant, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Now, you know why I'm ringing you? Who is it, who is it speaking for? Uh, it's Chris Tarrant, you're on telly, <laughs> we're on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Brilliant. OK, right, good. Now, so you know what's happening then? The very fact that I'm ringing you means that Phil is on the show, he's in the chair, he's doing all right, good. but he's got really bogged down on one particular question. Right. John, the good thing for you is that there are only two alternatives left. Basically, one is right and one is wrong. Okay. All right, mate. Next voice you hear will be Phil's. 
He'll tell okay. you the question. There are two possible answers. One of them is worth £5,000. All right, mate. OK, thank you. Right, Phil, fingers crossed. Your time starts now. John, the yeah. word scampi comes from which language? Finnish or Italian? Italian. Are you sure? Yeah. Yeah. Great, John. Thanks very much. OK. See you, mate. Cheers now, John. But you thought finish. I, I, yeah. <laughs> I'll go for Italian, final answer. But you, but, <laughs> but you thought finish. I did. You sure he's right? No. <laughs> Think he's wrong? No, he's a good lad, John. It's the right answer. You've got £5,000. <laughs> So, Phil Ackley is hanging in there. He's on £5,000. The next question is for ten grand, but he's just used up his last lifeline. We'll take a break. Don't go away. Welcome back to the final part of tonight's Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? All Phil here did to get a place on this show was pick up the phone. So why don't you do the same? Give us a call. 09068 444444. Uh, as always, calls cost 60p a minute from BT Landlines and should last no longer than two minutes. Calls from other networks may be higher and from mobiles will be considerably more. Uh, for terms and the closing date, check your millionaire page on www.itv.com. Then, before you know it, you could be facing me from the most sought-after seat in the land. Just like Phil Ackley here, is currently on £5,000, but has now used up all his lifelines to get there. And he's looking kind of battered. Yes. <laughs> you were flying, I knew, I knew, I knew Italian words, and I can speak a bit of French and all of that, and uh, Spanish. Yeah. But I, I thought it might be one of those, the worm question, like earlier on. No, 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 and there are no trick questions. And if you think about it, a leech yeah. is kind of like yeah. a worm. Yeah. Right, come on, we can regroup on this, Phil. Come on, be positive. We'll be, you have yeah. five thousand. Yeah, what, what did Louise tell you before you came away? What was, the, what was the advice? There's always just something. Relax and just live in the moment. Just do every question one at a time. That's all. And have you relaxed? No. <laughs> Not one bit. <laughs> and have you enjoyed the moment? Not no. a lot. <laughs> but you still might. Yeah. Right, you have £5,000. Question number five is for £10,000. You would lose four of the £5,000 you have at this moment if you give me a wrong answer. You could double your money. Take your time. You have no lifelines, but have a look and tell me what you want to do. Bradley Wiggins is a top name in which sport? Why are you nodding at me? I think I know this. Tell me what you want to see come up on this screen. Cycling. OK. Cycling doesn't come up. Panic. <laughs> right. Have a look. Darts. Show jumping. Cycling. Athletics. Before I think anymore, cycling, Chris. Final answer. Cycling in Italy. <laughs> it's the right answer. You got ten thousand pounds. See, suddenly the sun's come out. <laughs> Your whole attitude has changed with one question. Yeah. He was a uh, gold medalist. I think he won two. Yeah, at yeah. Beijing. Good athlete. So you feel better now. So you yeah, still might do your travelling. You could. Well, you got ten thousand pounds. Yeah. You're talking about charity walk in Namibia. You're talking about going to see gorillas, which is a fantastic experience. Yeah. Uh, in Africa, just stunning. Okay, right. You have ten thousand pounds. Question number six is for £20,000. Phil, you've clawed your way up to ten grand. Do not lose it. If you give me a wrong answer at this point, you would lose nine of the £10,000 you have at this moment. OK. Sure. You're guaranteed £1,000. you have got £10,000. Nobody would blame you if you walk away with that. But question number six, you could double your money to £20,000. You're only two away from £50,000. Here it comes. Have a look. The musicians... Oh, Mr Smile again now. Yeah. Jarvis Cocker and Joe Cocker are both from which city? Newcastle, Birmingham, Sheffield, Winchester. I went to Sheffield University. Sheffield, final answer, Chris. It's 
the right answer. You got twenty thousand pounds. What a turnaround! I remember going to Sheffield to see Joe Cocker and the Grease Band. Yeah. Right, you have 20... You see, you're so happy now. Look at you. Seconds ago, you look like, you look like a man who done 15 rounds with Lennox Lewis about two minutes ago. You are on £20,000. Phil, do not get carried away here. You've got 20 grand. You were dead in the water. You got £20,000. The next question is for £50,000. You don't have to play it. You could take 20 grand. Um, but it's worth £50,000, and that would be the minimum amount you would go home with. But sure. give me a wrong answer, Phil Ackley, and you lose 19000 OK? And Louise will lock you out. <laughs> Have a look at question number seven. This is for £50,000. Here it comes. Who wrote the political thriller The Devil's Tune, published in 2003? Ian Duncan Smith, Anne Widdicombe, Douglas Hurd, Roy Hattersley. One of those is worth £50,000. You have no lifelines. Before we came on the show, I said I'd gamble up to £50,000. I don't... I've not read that. I know that Anne Whitcomb's a writer. And I don't think it's the sort of thing Douglas Hurd would write. But I'm not sure about Roy Hattersley. He's written books as well, novels as well. And I don't think it's Ian Duncan Smith. Tempted by Anne Whittigan. Whittigan. Yeah. She's been on the show, actually. She came on with Piers Morgan and did very well. You do not have to play this, Phil. It's your call. You have £20,000 at this moment. Three of those are wrong. It's not 50-50 even. It's a bit between them two. It's just Anne Widdicombe and Roy Hattersley, I think. No, I'd better take the money, Chris. I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. I do not want you to lose £19,000. I think Louise is about to faint. <laughs> Take the money, Chris. Thank you. Final answer. Final answer. <laughs> Thank goodness for that. Give him a big hand. <laughs> Phil Ackley goes away with £20,000. I will tell you that uh, Louise thinks you would have been wrong about Anne Widdicombe and the right answer would have been Roy Hattersley. Yeah. Yeah, you did write something, didn't you? No, she's wrong as well. It wasn't Roy Hattersley. It wasn't Anne Widdicombe. It wasn't Douglas Hurd. It was the one you said, well, it's not him. Ian Duncan <laughs> Smith. No, and if you'd been that little bit braver then, you would have just lost 19,000 pounds. Did you do the right thing? He goes away with 20,000 pounds. <laughs> Phil, you're kind of scary. <laughs> That's all we got time for. It's been a very complicated, epic old night. Earlier on tonight, Paul Harris returned from last time. He only had £2,000. He came back. He turned it into an altogether more appealing £75,000. Ashley then, Ashley Handley, got up to £5,000, but then dropped back to £1,000. Phil here turned his fortunes right around and ends the show with £20,000. The lines have now closed on our viewers' game, so please stop calling. You will not be included in tonight's competition. Lines are shut. I will tell you the correct answer to the question, there are two game birds in a brace. So the answer is 2A. And if you did say that tonight, you may have won £1,000. So from me, from a very relieved Phil, and even more relieved Louise up there, and everybody here on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, good night. ITV2 next, Jack Osborne is testing the nerves of Joanna Page, Reggie Yates and Jesse Metcalf in Celebrity Adrenaline Junkie. We have a profile of Ruth Rendell on ITV3, but here on ITV1, a hitman is going to need a heart of stone to carry out this particular assassination. The Fixer is next. <laughs>